Well, over the course of the campaign, we're going to be seeing a lot of my next guest. He's David Coletto, the CEO of Abacus Data, a public opinion research firm and a frequent contributor, as many of you will know, to the many conversations we have here at CPAC. And David, we're going to be seeing a, a lot of you during uh, this election campaign. And you're going to be here with us as a, uh, analyzing various public opinion surveys, and not just your own, but all kinds of them. And tell me more about that. What, what's the objective here? Well, I think, you know, any consumer, any, any viewer out there is going to get bombarded with polls telling us what Canadians think about issues, who's, what the horse race is, how are they reacting to the leaders or campaign events. My job working with you is to try to make sense of it all and give us a sense of where's the election going, are certain events, isn't a, a debate may having an impact, is a speech that a candidate, uh, maybe, maybe a mistake somebody makes, right. what impact is that having? Um, I'm going to try to distill it all for you and make it make some sense of it all. It'll give people perspective, right? Because they're going to see a lot of what we call the horse race numbers yeah. every day, which is who's up, who's down, who's up. And our objective here is to be able to go dig a little deeper and yeah. say, why do we think these numbers are moving? What is it these politicians are saying that has people, you know, uh, saying what they're saying to pollsters? It's and, the and one time pretty much ever that almost all Canadians are going to be paying attention to politics. And so it's a great time to be doing research and under understanding all this. And you've got some of us to, to, to kickstart the conversation, and, and let's talk about that. Yeah. We, we know what voters are concerned about, some cases even anxious about. And as the campaign kicks off, you've already got lots of information with us. So why don't we start there? Why don't you tell us what Canadians are telling you about what their big concerns are, the big issues for them, issues that might drive the vote? Yeah, and we're regularly tracking this. So this is something we're going to track over the election and have been up till now. And a handful of issues are rising up. So what we do is we ask people, what five issues are most important in determining your vote? And so the numbers don't add up to 100 because a respondent can give up to five right. of these issues or have to pick five. At the top of the list, cost of living. These are the affordability type issues, uh, followed by access to health care at 42%. Climate change and the environment is number three at 39 Taxes, which is a perennial issue high up on that list, is 38. Uh, what we term the economic plan for Canada's future, a.k.a. economy and jobs, is, is, uh, rounds up the top five at 33. Um, other top issues, poverty and inequality, housing affordability, immigration, refugee policies, deficits, and then the cost and availability of medicine. So these are the, the, the issues on a lo much longer list that we test that get at least a quarter of the country saying, that's important to me. Right, and we're going to, over the, the, the time of our coverage here, we're going to go through all, you know, many of these in great detail. But let's focus on that, that top issue, that idea of affordability. What do you find when you dig a little deeper on that issue, on the, on the cost of living? Because you broke the survey down by group to give us a better understanding what, of what people are saying and why they're concerned. So let's start with age. When you look at how big of a problem is the cost of living for you and you look at the age, what are we seeing here? Well, we actually don't see much difference, which I think is interesting. People often assume that one, one age cohort is, is you know, dealing with this issue more than others. What, what's interesting about cost of living is whether you're young or old, and you can see across the board, about 40% or so say it's a big problem for them, and that's the national average. Is, and this is an important issue about, about cost of living and affordability, life stage matters to what issues are, re are related to cost right. of living. So when you're younger, particularly you say you're 18, you're in university, tuition might be the most expensive thing you're paying for, or housing. And you have a, then you become you know, a parent, and childcare becomes uh, the big cost issue that you're dealing with. So as you get older and your life changes, what matters in terms of affordability differs, which makes it hard from a policy perspective to solve it. But it's, yeah, it's so one of those issues. So many different groups with so many different concerns. That so many different people can, can, can understand. Okay. And then you, then you asked, uh, when, you dig, when you're also digging a little deeper here, you, you, what, you, you look at numbers about, uh, we saw age, we saw education. Or, or when, you, when you ask about cost or income, what do we hear? Yeah, well, this is the interesting discussion about the cost of living. Is, is it a question of my wages or income isn't going fa up fast enough to meet? Uh, the costs in my life, or do I feel the costs themselves are going up? And what we find is that Canadians are fairly split. 58% say it's about their income not going up fast enough. 42% say um, it's about the costs going up too fast. But what's interesting, among those who say this is a big problem, they're far more likely to say it's because their income hasn't gone up fast enough. So solutions to this during the campaign might center around how to reduce costs, whether it's wireless fees, whether it's, you know, the cost of medications, things like that. But the hard part for government is how do you get wages up? And I think despite the good economic numbers we've had, the real challenge has been some wage stag stag stagflation or, or stagnation that is causing 
part of this concern to happen. Okay, and the next one we want to look at is, you asked this question, is it about housing or something else? Yeah, and for most it's about something else. 63% um, say it's not about the uh, cost of housing, but for a third of Canadians or so it is. And so this is again the multi-dimensional aspect of this issue. Housing affordability has been high up on our list for a long time. It's particularly uh, important for younger Canadians, first-time home buyers. Uh, you know, the government in, in the, the last budget made some, some policy changes there to try to help first-time home buyers, uh, but we, we see it still as an issue that, that affects uh, a small but sizable minority of people who say that cost of housing is really what's, what's holding me back. Mm. I found this next one really interesting. When you ask about, this is really surprising to me, is it about essentials or non-essentials? What did you find? Well, for, for most, it's about essentials, but not all, and almost, it's almost not quite 50-50, but almost 50-50. 44% .50, uh, of Canadians tell us it's not about essentials. It's about the other things in my life that I think are going up. And this is the other dynamic of this issue, that for some, making ends meet is really hard, and it's hard to do. Because that's others, what we hear, right? We hear that this is a conversation about the, the ability to make ends meet and getting harder and harder. When I hear someone say it's... The 44 percent. It's not about the essentials. I don't think of that as making ends meet. I think of that's the family vacation. Yeah. That's other trips. That's about. But they're all thinking that. Right? There's a and, lot of and people. Exactly, and it's and it's about quality of life. So it's not even about a certain standard of living. It's about quality of life. That if I used to expect to be able to go on a family vacation every year, and I no longer can do it because certain costs are not are going up or my income's not going up. That's going to f affect my, my perception. So it's, it is, again, multidimensional. It's hard to grasp the, co the cost of living affordability sort of equation, but because so many people come at it from different angles, but it's clearly something that the parties are talking about, they're going to talk about in this campaign, and, and the voters want them to. So then you, you did some drilling down again on this and, and with, with a view to finding it, what are these affordability pain points? And this gives us a better idea of where people say they're feeling yeah. the pinch. And we ask people, you know, how big of a factor is the cost of these things affecting, you know, how you feel about the cost of living? At the top of the list, the cost of food um, affects the most people who, who do so say it's... That's an essential. That's I mean, an essential. Yeah. And there has been StatsCan, you know, data that says for certain, uh, certain types of food products, price has gone up quite a bit. Uh, housing, you can see, very prominent. Home heating and electricity, we're likely going to see lots of policy uh, on that, particularly from the Conservatives. Out-of-pocket health care costs, transportation, gas, transit, parking. These are the issues that are more, uh, more salient to people. Child care, tuition, to, to a lesser extent, wireless communications. But the child care, tuition, those are issues that only affect a smaller segment, which is why they're at the bottom of the list. For, for many Canadians, tuition payments and child care are not concerns at all because they're not at that stage in their life. Um, but for if you, if you ask a 32-year-old you know, young family in Toronto whether, who has kids, if they have child care is a big sure. issue, that's, that's that, that small segment. All right, so that, now that brings us, let's, let's sort of flip this now to pivot to the campaign itself. And the, so there's a bunch of things on offer for people, right, yeah. an election campaign. And what are they telling you when you when you ask them? Okay, so tell me about the parties and their approach to dealing with the affordability issue and your concerns. What do you find? And among the people then who said cost of living is an issue, and I should say that not everybody. Right. Uh, the Conservatives have a slight advantage on this issue. Uh, six points ahead of the Liberals. Twenty-three percent say the Conservatives would be best. Seventeen the Liberals. Sixteen the NDP. Five percent for the Greens. Now that's pretty tight. Like that. That tells me as you're going to, you know, we talk about other issues. Um, this is not an advantage to any one party. And there's a lot of Canadians at the start of this campaign who say, I don't know. Yeah, look at the unsure, best, the unsure right? number. This is what campaigns are about. Right. It's about making the case. And I suspect we already know, actually, that all three parties will make affordability and the cost of living a big issue. And they're going to be fighting for those voters. Yeah, that really tells you how they're going to, when they see a number like that, that, OK, there's, a, there's to some extent, there's an open audience. You know, 30% of those yep. people who say this is an issue, they want to hear more. They want, they want to hear who's got a better plan. Yep. Okay, uh, national economic perceptions. How do, yeah. Let's talk about that. Well, you know, what the, you found there? It's the economy, silly, uh, different word, but uh, is often used to say, well, the economy is going well, the government should get reelected. The economy is going poorly, it should lose. Canadians are actually, when you ask them, how do you feel about the current national economy? I would say they're feeling okay about it. It's actually a very different place from where we were in 2015. Canadians were feeling quite pessimistic about the state of the economy in right. 2015. Today. Most say it's either acceptable, good, or, or very good in terms of how it's going. Uh, about 30% say it's doing poor or terrible. So, you know, if, if these numbers hold throughout the campaign, 
that's not a bad place for the Liberals, for an incumbent government to be in. That, that acceptable category, they wish it probably was a little bit higher, but um, these, are, these are pretty good, I think, for an incumbent to be entering an election with the country feeling pretty good about the economy. All right, then, then we have kind of a vision thing, and that's the when you ask, okay, which party do you think has the best economic plan for Canada's future? Let's look at that. Yeah, and, I, and again, the Conservatives have a, a slight advantage here. Ten points is bigger than their advantage on cost of living. This is, again, among people who said the economy is a top issue, which in this case, Conservatives are more likely uh, to rank high, right. which is why the Conservatives are doing better here. Uh, but still, a lot of people saying, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm open. 22% say they're not sure. The NDP, the Greens, much farther down on this. This isn't a, usually an issue they, they perform well on. Um, I suspect what will be more important in these two issues, economy or cost of living, at this stage, if economic perceptions hold as they are, I suspect cost of living will be a much more important question for voters as they as ask themselves, which of you know these four or five parties is going to make my life more affordable? Um, perhaps, although I think other issues will, will mm -hmm. play a role, may be uh, a big fat factor in how this election ends up. All right, David Coletto, uh, thanks for this. And uh, David will be uh, joining us throughout our election coverage on an ongoing basis here uh, on CPAC as we uh, continue our election coverage. Thanks. Thanks, Peter.